Alright guys, it's another stroll around the property. The uh, 12 gauge. In case I see any squirrels. It's like the third day in a row I've done this. I've got one each day. I'm not really out squirrel hunting. I checked my stands the other day. I went yesterday and looked for a couple better spots. But uh, take this along. You know, targets of opportunity, I guess. It's hot as hell out, too, by the way. Pretty nice. You know, a lot of people like to use the. Uh, you know, get 22 or something like that for squirrel, which is brilliant. <clears throat> Mine happens to have uh, the magazine to it. It's kind of junk. So I load, load the mag up, I put it in, I chamber around. Once I go to rack it back and do that again, all the rounds pop out. So it's some little, like, tab at the top that's opened up and won't stay shut, which is why that happens. So, but still got tons of leaves and stuff obviously so in these situations I, I'd prefer a shotgun anyway and uh, I mostly hunt with the shotgun so this is what it is. Well that happened quick as it usually does. Tough to get the camera on and in, in the right direction uh, when you're on the move. Uh, if you sit and wait a lot of times let the woods quiet back down they'll, they'll come out and you can have a better chance at that but we're just walking up the trail. The meadow's right behind me, uh, that way. And, uh, two little guys. So they pissed off up the tree. I got the shot at this one. And uh, the other one pissed right off. I don't know where he went. That's what I'm saying. Again, the, the, all the leaves and stuff, they, they can hide right up in there and you'll never see them. Uh, come fall, all the leaves are gone. A uh, little bit more difficult for them and easier for us. So, not a bad little dude. I'm gonna uh, wait here just a few minutes. Uh, see if this dude comes back out. Uh, if not, we'll head back to the house and I'll process this guy and cook him up. Well, waited another 20 minutes or so. No movement, no nothing. Uh -oh. Not sure I'd move either if I had someone shooting a 12 gauge at me. <laughs> But, uh, so we're gonna head back to the house. I don't want to wait too long. It's easy to skin these guys out when they're somewhat fresh. This dude's got a little bit of rigor setting in, but it's not too bad yet. So uh, let's go do this. All right, so here we are. Wife will kill me if she sees me doing this, but she's at work and I'm not. So there's a ton of ways to do these. Uh, I've done it a few different ways over the years as well. You can just make a slit in the back Get your fingers in and just pull apart. Uh, I find that that you could tear the stomach pretty easy that way. Um, I've skinned them out uh, like you would any animal for taxidermy and I uh, saved the whole pelt. I've done that a bunch of times. Uh, a lot of work actually. So show you a different way. So right by the vent uh, there's almost a little seam there not in his ass but just above it uh, where the tail goes in. So you're gonna make a cut there. Just like that. Went a little too low there. I think you can see that. So there's the tail and some sinews and stuff in there. You want to get through that to the skin basically. Just like that. So you can see the skin there. Now some people like to cut more down the legs and all that. Uh, you don't really need to do that. You just need to get your fingers in uh, and then we'll show you how to pull it off. But uh, another handy tip. I just got, again, <laughs> the wife's kitchen scissors should kill me. So I'm just going to cut the front feet off. Makes it pretty easy to do. Like that, we'll do the back ones as well. You can use your knife, I've done that in the past, but you know, you're gonna dull your blade a lot quicker, so don't do it anymore. But then I'm just gonna start working my fingers in here to try to pull that skin away from the meat.
like that. And now we'll uh, move the camera for you. So with that, let's see where we're in frame here. I'm gonna step right at the base of that tail where we cut. I'm gonna grab a good hold of the legs here and pull. So you get down to the uh, the front legs there. Readjust my foot here. Still in frame here. And then you just try to work those out. A little more, I guess. You can see the arms come right out there. Just get your fingers in. Pull it out. Now we're right to the neck. Let's see if I can zoom in for you. So right to the neck there already. We're just going to cut the head off anyway. So we're good there. I'm going to leave this tail so I have something to pull on too and get this last bit the back side. If you have a pair of pliers so you can pinch this little piece here that works or some catfish skinners or whatever. I'm just going to grab that give that a pull asshole came right out with it try not to drop it in the damn dirt like I did uh, but that's all that done again we're at the neck so we can just in frame there we're at the neck so we can just cut that head off again my wife would have a conniption but no blood so there's all your bits, feet, uh, the back end with the asshole and the intestines. And if you didn't drop it all over the shop like I just did in the dirt, like a dumbass, it'd be nice and clean, no fur or anything on it. Uh, so now we gotta gut it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a rinse off first, uh, and then we'll do that. All right, just get some cheesy plastic here. Uh, the rest of our bits are in a bag off to the side so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is through the vent there just get under the pelvic bone pretty simple under the skin of the belly and just ride it up try not to puncture anything if you can help it right through the breastplate So everything intact, now I can just take a couple fingers and you should be able to pull it all right down. All comes out in one shot. And just another quick rinse off, uh, we'll go over it, uh, see where it was hit with shot. Uh, if there's any right on the surface we can try to get that out so we're not biting into it when we cook it but uh pretty clean right there well, like I said rinse them off Alright, 
nice and clean. So what I typically do now is put them in a brine. I can do it in a bowl after you get it. I'm just going to throw some water in here. Cold water. It's enough to submerge them, obviously. I'm just going to dump a bunch of salt in there. Uh, tablespoon, I guess. Get him back in there. That'll draw out any of the uh, any more blood that's in there. So. I'll do that. I'll let him sit like that for uh, at least a couple hours. Alright, so like I said, that, when you brine them, your water is going to look like that. Pulls all that extra blood out. Uh, this is one that I got yesterday. So he's been brining actually overnight. So we'll take care of him in a minute. But when you've done that, I was going to try a new way. squirrel is also uh, not the one we just shot but so what I did I put some white wine some balsamic vinegar fresh parsley some chopped onions and uh, some crushed garlic probably four or five cloves of that and this has been marinating uh, just over 24 hours and it smells awesome by the way so what I was gonna do with him uh, let's try something new. Uh, I was going to steam them till the meat falls off the bone, which I typically like to do because they can be stringy. Uh, and then I was going to throw them on the grill with some barbecue sauce. Obviously, once you steam them, the meat's cooked. Um, it would just be crisping up that barbecue sauce, getting that grilled char on it. Uh, sounds amazing, I know, but I don't have any barbecue sauce at the moment. <laughs> so we're still going to steam them off the bone, excuse me, uh, in the steamer here. And you can do this a bunch of different ways too. I've done it with beer in the past. Uh, typically, more often than not, I do it with water. Uh, but this time, I'm using all that goodness. Let's get you over to the, the pan here. So I'm putting all that stuff in there. To you. This smells ridiculous right now. I know I say that in all my cooking videos. But I ain't lying. Try them out. <laughs> smells so good. Almost smells like a, a Portuguese marinade. Which they use a lot of wine and such. onions and parsley. I may top that up with just a bit of water. One cup, he says. And get that dude steaming. And do some dishes in the interim. Squirrels steaming away nicely, uh, just about done. So I got some water on in the back there, add some salt to that. So I had a change of plans. I was gonna do this my favorite way, but it's almost smelling again like a some type of Portuguese marinade or even Italian. So with that, I'm gonna knock up a little bit of pasta with that. Alright, so 8 to 10 minutes in the pasta. That's good. We'll strain that off real quick.
back on a very low heat just for a bit throw some butter in a little drizzle of olive oil some garlic a little bit of sea salt Just gonna let that butter melt all the way. Chef parts. So while I'm butter is melting, it's only gonna be a couple minutes. Take the squirrel out. What I'm gonna do with him? Just whack him under the grill real quick in the oven. Uh, brown him off just a little bit, and I will plate up. All right, let's do it. I'm ready to eat. Z. Give me some bread and butter, and I can just tuck into that. Oh, bread and butter, you say? Oh, there it is. And I'll swirl. Alright, let's go get into it. Alright. There's some of those ziti. Hmm. How you go wrong with that? Butter, garlic, salt, pepper, done. Hmm. Proper beverage management. The sun has gone down over the yard on somewhere. And marinade's unbelievable. Almost like chicken. <clears throat> Ziti al dente. Do yourself a favor and use a roll, <coughs> portage roll, probably the best. Uh, Kaiser roll, something Italian bread maybe. Not this crap. Still good. Though. So 
I'm going to continue mowing this. Uh, there will be none left, I guarantee you that. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. A uh, little bit different way uh, than most videos I see on YouTube as far as how to skin the squirrel out. Uh, it's pretty easy that way, actually, if you're not trying to save the hide or anything. And just something different uh, with the way I marinated it, uh, steamed it up, and just whack it under the grill for you know five minutes or so. That's a wrap over some ziti. Hell of a lunch. Happy hunting, guys. <laughs>